Hey guys. So many cars. Okay. So there's this J drama that I watched a long time ago, and I felt so called out. <laughs> Like, how is the main heroine exactly like me to the point where it's terrifying? Like, who's been spying on my life? <laughs> um, I don't remember the exact title. I remember the plot and not the title related to the plot, but I'll put the title up on the screen. So basically, there's a scene multiple scenes where the main character imagines herself um, on TV being interviewed after she's made it successfully narrating all the struggles she had to go through only for the daydream to end and her to be through the struggle um, <laughs> like actually doing the thing and I do that a lot <laughs> So much. I imagine interviews for when I'm rich and famous and I'm on a talk show, late night show or whatever, and I'm just give, talking about my thoughts, my ideas, the things I had to go through, that I'm going through. <laughs> and one of these thoughts was about how we talk about morbid obesity and I'm just imagining myself at my ideal weight and I'm successful and on a talk show and somebody asked me what's one thing you wish America would do differently and just imagining myself on that couch saying ooh this is gonna get me cancelled but <laughs> We need to stop glamorizing morbid obesity. Now hear me out, there's a difference. Car. <laughs> there is a difference between glamorizing morbid obesity and not allowing fat people to have a place. There's a difference. You can be fat and still think yourself beautiful. I am a good example of that. Maybe my hair doesn't show that right now, but I do feel that way. Um, and there is a difference in having a good feeling about yourself versus saying you don't have to change a darn thing about you because you're perfect, you ain't perfect, hon. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. There are a lot of things we need to change about ourselves. Inside and out. And it just happens to be when you're morbidly obese, one of those things does have to happen on the outside. Sad part is, you have to make that decision. And I was listening to this podcast while Ubering. Um, still in that hustle moment, the hustle week. It does continue. Today's Friday. I get a break tomorrow. Woot. But, excuse me. There is a difference in accepting you and accepting your body. I do not accept my body where it is right now. I am grateful. I am happy. I am enjoying my own skin. I think I look gorgeous, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop here. It doesn't. <laughs> Another car. I'm going to keep going. I just got out of 98 into 97. I'm so excited about that. And I'm having so much joy for that. And I'm just celebrating that. But that doesn't mean I stop here. This is not my end result. This is not where I'm going to stop 
trying to better myself. Another car. <laughs> I'm gonna keep trying every single day to change my attitude, which has gotten pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, apparently working Uber for eight hours straight. Two cars, possibly a third. Nope, just two. <laughs> um, but apparently we're working uber eight hours straight brings out a very ugly side of me um like i said before in another vlog i don't do people i just do food um but even then there's some rude people out there both on the roads and the ones delivering but then there are also some really awesome people like somebody gave me 50 bucks for panera <laughs> But all that truck, all that to say, and a minivan on the way, all that to say, mm hmm yep, yep, thank you, all that to say, it's a mixed bag, and sometimes I can get hung up on the little things, and I... I don't know, I feel kind of way about it because, um, I don't know, like in the morning I will explicitly look for the positive even in a bad situation, but by the evening I am so angry at everything. <laughs> Just, if the wind blows one degree too cold, I get, like, my whole thing flips. And I just, whew, I need to work on that. Like I said, I'm not perfect. But, one, two, three. <coughs> cool. Um, like I said, I don't think that how I view myself has anything to do with me wanting to be healthy. If anything, the way I view myself makes me want to be more healthy. Because when you're comfortable in your skin, and you like the way you look, and you like the way you are, and you want only the best for you, you love yourself so much, yeah, you want to be healthy. <laughs> Sorry, but... Mm, don't get me wrong, there's nothing worse than not having anything that makes you feel good when you go to a store and you're shopping. Remember, I'm a millennial. I was born in 93. I went through the whole going to Kato's to get my clothes for school. Mm -hmm. I remember looking like a mom or a grandma because those were the only clothes that fit me because they didn't make plus size kids clothes back then yeah so it's not to say that manufacturers shouldn't make clothes for oversized women and men they should it is a right not a privilege um car But it shouldn't be the expectation that now that you have pretty clothes, all the work is done. No. <laughs> like, you have the right to be clothed. You don't have the right to abuse yourself. Ooh, that ticked off a lot of people right there. You do not have the right to abuse yourself. Um, but I mentioned the podcast before. I was going to go straight into that, and somehow I ended up here. Um... I definitely think people should watch or listen or stream wherever you listen to podcasts, I guess. Um, Patrice Washington's Redefining Wealth. She had an interview with a guy named Kelly. I can't remember his last name. Uh, dear goodness. 
but this was more of a spontaneous like recording after realizing my daydream could be a reality I do have a platform <laughs> I don't have to wait till I'm rich and famous to get my thoughts out I can just say it now but um he was giving a story of a time he lost his cool and he ran into a guy on the airplane in first class <laughs> and like the guy kind of laid it out for him and this was the takeaway I got from it um you buy the thing you the things you need you kill for the things you want and right now you can see I'm walking and talking to you the audio is probably gonna be garbage it's fine <laughs> But, like, what better example than right now? It's Lent, and I'm fasting, laziness, and procrastination. And this is a part of it. This walk right now. This is a part of it. And, ugh. Oh, like, I killed my flesh to get here. It is week three. And I've lost, I don't even know how much I've lost, like two kilos since this fast started. Because I came into agreement with the Lord and said, I give you my laziness and my procrastination. And I'm relying on you this week. <laughs> I didn't know in week three what he was going to do. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> excuse me. Here we are. 97. I'm in the 97s, y'all. And I'm working my way down to 96. And then to 95. <laughs> and we're just going to keep going from there. But, um, like, if I have the faith to kill my flesh. For the Lord. What else do I have the, the faith to do? You know, what else can I do? I don't know what y'all want. <laughs> what y'all trying to kill for? Genuinely, like, what are you willing to kill for because you want it that bad? I'll tell you one thing. This week of hustling has taught me that I have been selling myself short. I say I want an extra income to help me launch a business. Link in the description for the <laughs> for the shop I just launched on Spoonflower. I say I want it, but I wasn't killing for it. <laughs> well, guess what? She's a murderess today. <laughs> we are a full-fledged murderess today. But, um... Yeah. It showed me that... Guess what? I got bills to pay. I can pay them. Guess what? I want to go to South Korea first class in a nice hotel and buy whatever I want. I have the means to do it. I just hadn't done it. <laughs> I say I want it. This is me putting it forward, giving the Lord something to bless. Another thing that I learned from the Patrice Washington podcast, Redefining Wealth. <laughs> you can't ask God to bless you and not give him anything to bless. Ooh, that one hurt me. <laughs> uh so I am giving him everything I've got, and he has been blessing it, and I've been seeing it. Oh, I have been seeing it. <sighs> All right, I've got half of the circuit left, <laughs> and then I go another two rounds, but I just wanted to touch base with y'all. Um, this will not be edited. I will most likely 
keep in every single car <laughs> and all of my silliness um like i said i have been a crazy woman with this uber eats business and i only just got a day to rest yesterday after my eight hours because I have unfortunately a very active uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> Soon to just be Tuesday, uh, just be Wednesday. But in the meantime, huh, I got real ugly Tuesday night. Mm. Real ugly. Ooh boy. If you've ever seen someone hangry, try me when I'm sleep deprived. It ain't pretty. It is not pretty. I don't want to talk to no one. I don't want to do nothing. I don't even want to take care of myself. But guess what? I sat there, stood there, for like a good 10 minutes before I finally kicked my butt into gear. And like, you made a commitment to the Lord not to be lazy and procrastinate. Why are you procrastinating arguing with yourself? Ooh. I was all up in my feelings all up in my feelings Whew. but alrighty I'm gonna let you guys go I'm gonna keep walking <laughs> and then I get to uber I get to uber my car though it has its issues it's working for this and I will call that a blessing of the Lord and I've been given grace my mom's helping me with gas so I don't have to spend any of this money that needs to go to this thing <laughs> uh, on gas making me have to work twice as hard it's hard getting to $89 so let's just round up to $90 with Uber Eats it's nearly impossible to get 100 without a good tip or like working yourself to the bone so, I'm very grateful that my mom offered to help me this morning. <sighs> but it ain't just a southern woman thing to just say goodbye like a thousand times before she actually does it. So let me go. Bye. <laughs>